Hello and uh, welcome to uh, National STEM Club. Uh, my name is Michael Anderson. I work at the National STEM Learning Centre in York and today we're going to explore Caesar ciphers. Now this is a way of uh, encoding messages so that nobody else apart from the person that you want to read the message can actually read your secret message. So there's plenty of things that we uh, need uh, for this uh, session. Uh, so let's just have a look at some of the materials that you need in order to make your very own Caesar cipher. So for the first part of uh, the session, you'll just need a pen uh, and a paper or a pencil and paper. Uh, we're going to look at uh, writing our own secret messages and we're also going to try and decipher messages that have already been written and coded using the Caesar cipher. For the second part of the session, we're actually going to make our own Caesar cipher. So what you'll need is a couple of um, pieces of paper, a pencil, a ruler, compasses with a pencil, a protractor, and you'll also need a split pin which is one just like that uh, that opens up as well. Now, if you don't have one of these, uh, you can try and uh, make do with some other types of pins, um, but these are really good uh, for making the sort of spinning motion that we'll need. OK, so let's have a quick look through the history of a Caesar cipher. So uh, Julius Caesar was a Roman general and a statesman, and he lived over 2000 years ago, uh, and he used this cipher. So it's named after him because he's one of the most famous people that used it uh, over 2,000 years ago. Now, Julius Caesar was a Roman general. He had lots of important messages that he had to send to his troops that were spread over vast distances. And what he didn't want is for those messages to be intercepted and read by his enemies. Now, a lot of the people at the time were quite illiterate. So if they did even manage to intercept one of his messages, they might not be able to read it. But if somebody could read it, he wanted a way of coding it to make sure that if they did intercept it, even uh, looking at it, they wouldn't be able to actually figure out what on earth was going on. So it's a really, really old cipher. And what you have to do is take your existing alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, all the way to Z, and we're going to replace different letters for the letters that we actually want to use in the message. So Caesar is known for a shift three. He liked the sort of shift three cipher, which meant that he shifted all the letters in the alphabet up three places. So instead of starting with A, B, C, the Caesar cipher that Caesar used started with D, E, and F, and then carried on. And the ABC, well, they were at the end, uh, just after Z, so it went X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And what that meant is, if you wrote a message using just normal A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera, et cetera, every time you used an A in your encrypted message, you'd write the letter D instead. F would go to I, M would become P, and V would become Y, et cetera, et cetera, with Z being replaced by C. So let's look at a very old cipher as a message. If we were to rewrite this using a Caesar cipher that's been shifted by three, the A would become a D. Now very, V becomes Y, E becomes H, R becomes U, and Y becomes B. So we end up with D, U which is really difficult to read. If somebody was to pick up this message, they'd probably think it was in a foreign language and it was a foreign language that they'd never come across before the message would be safe. So we can do the same for the word old and the word uh, cipher. So O becomes R, uh, looking down, L becomes O and D becomes G. So old becomes rog. Cipher, well, C becomes an F, I becomes an L, P becomes an S, H becomes a K, E becomes a H, R becomes a U. So we have this flusco, and that would be the message that uh, Caesar would write down and send to the people who needed to get the message, maybe on the front line of a battle, uh, some kind of strategic um, action that they might have to do on his behalf. So you would send that message instead of the a very old cipher message. Now, once his um, generals or whoever else it was that was uh, reading his messages uh, got this message, they'd have to do the opposite. So they'd look at the bottom line now and they'd work upwards. So 
where they'd see a D, they'd work up and say, oh, that's meant to be an A. Oh, this message starts A. And then Y, H, U, B. Again, they'd look for Y at the bottom, see it was a V. H at the bottom and look up, it was an E. U at the bottom would become an R. And the B at the bottom, all the way at the end, Y. Ah, ah, very. And that way they'd be able to unpick what the message was uh, without giving the game away. Uh, if the person who intercepted this message didn't know they were using this Caesar cipher, didn't know it was a shift three, then they'd look at it and think it was complete gobbledygook. So that's how it works. The nice thing about a Caesar cipher is, though, you can shift the letters as much or as little as you like. So in this case, I've shifted all of the letters up by nine places. So J is the start of my new alphabet using this Caesar cipher. So J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And then after Z, so Q it moves to Z, R is now A, and it follows on. So I've used this cipher in this example. And what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and see if you can find the meaning of these four words. Now, you're going to have to work from the bottom upwards. So just to give you a hint, the U in the first one is actually an L. And these are all four places in the UK. If you want to pause this video now and have a go at it, please feel free to do so. And I'll reveal the answers in just a few moments. OK, this is it. If you're not ready, press pause, but I'm going to reveal what the hidden cities were. OK, the first one was London. Then we had Swansea, Bradford and Stirling. I hope you managed to get those. OK, so now we're going to move on to my favourite part of this session, which is making your own Caesar cipher. So you'll need a card, a pen or a pencil, some scissors a ruler, a pair of compasses, a protractor and a split pin. Uh, and hopefully you will look as happy as I do in this picture. If you have a printer, I've put a little link there to Bletchley Park, which is home of the Enigma machine, uh, another famous way of uh, coding messages. They've actually got a printout so you can just print that out and cut it out yourself and make your own Caesar cipher. But if you don't have a printer available, but you've just got some card and all those bits and pieces, uh, you can actually make one yourself. So I'll talk you through how to do that now. Yesterday evening, I sat here and I made my own. So I got two pieces of paper, a card, one green one, and I cut a hole in it, and then a yellow piece of paper, and I cut another slightly larger hole. Now, I didn't really measure these. I just made sure that one was significantly bigger or at least a couple of centimetres bigger than the other. So this is what we're aiming for. This Caesar cipher here cut out one circle, which is slightly larger than another circle. Then what you're going to have to do, and I did this with my smaller circle first, is split it into 26 equal sections. Now, there are 360 degrees in a circle. We're going to divide that by 26, which unfortunately isn't a really nice number. It's 13.8 degrees. So with your protractor, you're going to have to mark out a series of 13.8 degree sections all the way around. Now, as a bit of a shortcut, I managed just to do half of them. And then I got my ruler and I went through the middle each time to split all of these sections up. Now again, as a little bit of a time saver, once I've done the smaller section, I could then just put it in the middle to so make sure it was the middle and the middle, and then just mark off where the smaller circle sections were on the larger one, just here and here and here, took that away, and then again, using my ruler, went through the middle and made 26 equal sections on the larger piece of paper too. Once that was all done, I got my split pin, I popped it through the middle like that, uh, and I wrote A, B, C, D, E, F, G, as you can see, the alphabet all the way around, and I was very thankful that the last section was Z, and I'd done it correctly, there were 26 equal spaces. And I did the same for the green one. And then once you've got this, you can spin this round, and you can decide which shift you like. So if we start there, that's obviously a shift of zero. If you use a, a Caesar cipher with a shift of zero, it's not gonna be that secure, but you can decide how far you want to go around. So if we wanted a Caesar cipher of say uh, five, where, where we had A in our original message, we're now gonna replace it with E. 
you can hold it in that position and trace out and figure out what your messages should be. Now, the person who you send your message to should probably already have one of these as well. And you need to tell them what the shift was. So it might be a pre-agreed pre uh, shift that you're always going to use five or for every message it's going to shift on one or two or three places every time and keep on going around. But you need to have that agreed beforehand. Otherwise, it could be quite obvious if you send a message saying, I've used a Caesar cipher six. Then if somebody knew about Caesar ciphers, they could probably figure out what your message was. Now, the nice thing about this is you can invent your own Caesar ciphers. You don't have to put in the middle wheel uh, just the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G in order, the alphabet. You could use different symbols. You could use different uh, combinations. So you could actually start with uh, A and then the next one could be C, E, F and Every time and then come back to the other one, letters that you've missed out, you can make your own. And so long as you've got two copies between you and the person that you're sending a message to that are exactly the same and you know which shift you're using, then you can quite happily send messages back and forth without anybody ever knowing. But there is one final warning about Caesar ciphers, because even if you've got the most secure Caesar cipher, both of you know how to read it and then actually decipher it as well, there could be somebody who could still break your message because of the English language. It's going to let you down a little bit. Now this graph here in the grey shows you the English letter frequency. And that is in the English usage, if you look at uh, analysed texts of newspapers, books, uh, stuff online, communication, wherever it would be, and have a vast amount of it, you can see how often one letter occurs more than another. So if you've got a string of gobbledygook and say, for example, the X appears lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times more than any other number in this string of uh, Caesar ciphered uh, message, you could probably infer that it's likely to be the letter E. So you can start to strip away and say, well, if X is E and they've used a Caesar cipher, ah, I might be able to figure it out because I can uh, get, my, get my own Caesar cipher and I can shift E to be X. And let's see if that helps with uh, decoding this message. Uh, similarly, if you look at uh, letters that are hardly used, the J's, the Q's and the X's and the Z's don't appear that much in the English language. So again, it might give people a clue to say, well, these four letters aren't being used very much. They could correspond to J, Q, X and Z. So just by looking at the frequency uh, of how often these letters are used, it could be actually somebody could still crack your Caesar cipher messages. OK, so. So what have we learned? Well, we've seen how Caesar ciphers can be used to code messages and then to decode messages between people who want to keep their correspondence private. And we've also seen an example of actually how you could make one yourself so you can code your own messages. So in the real world, who would have a related career? Well, cybersecurity is a really big thing. A lot of the messages that we send via the internet, be it bank details, personal correspondence, or our own personal details, need to be encrypted somehow. They're not encrypted using Caesar ciphers, but using a lot more advanced technology in order to keep us safe. So it might be that cybersecurity could be a, a career interest that um, would follow up from these types of topics. Famously, uh, GCHQ, who work with MI5 and MI6, uh, focus on communications, intercepting messages uh, from the UK's adversary, adversaries, um, analysing and accessing secret messages of other countries or other people as well. So it could be that cyber security is the thing that you might want to look at following uh, your interest in ciphers. So next steps. Well, try coding some of your own messages um, that we've seen using some of the codes that we've seen today. Can you create your own unique cipher to keep your messages safe? And obviously, you want to get busy making your own Caesar cipher wheel. Once you've made it, you might want to share a picture of your project or indeed share some coded messages with us and tell us which cipher you've used. Thanks for joining us today uh, at the National STEM Club. I really hope you've enjoyed learning more about Caesar ciphers and hope to see you again next time.